Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I want to talk a little bit about a kernel version of SMBD, which is the SAMBA protocol or CIFS. So there's a, a it's a Linux uh, kernel service which implements the SMBD uh, three protocol in kernel space for sharing files across the network. So some of the things that's required for this is that you're going to have to have a Linux kernel 5.4 or higher before this will work. It will work with standard uh, Samba clients, so if you want to use it with Windows or a Mac or if you want to put it on Linux, it'll work just fine with that. So it is, a, it, it is one subset of operations which occur in the Linux kernel while the other subset occurs in user space. So it kind of splits up some of the, uh, the functionality, which things are being done in the kernel space, well, opens, reads, writes, and closes. And that, and that makes sense. Why would you do that? Well, you'd probably want to do that because that's where uh, Linux also has your driver for your I.O. to your your disk subsystem. It keeps everything together. And then the only other time it would be going out would be to get data and so forth. But KSMBD allows for easier integration of Linux virtual file system. It has a, it has a KSMBD kernel, and that is listening on port 445. So you cannot run this at the same time as Samba. You'll have to uninstall Samba if you if you want to try this if you have it if you have it installed already. But it responds to standard SMB requests, and for each new client, the KSMBD will fork so that each client has their own uh, version of the system that they're working with. The other thing it allows for is for parallel processing of SMB requests. It does support authentication, uh, both uh, NTLM and NTLM version 2. Also, Kerberos is coming, it's just not there quite yet. The protocols in SMB that it does support is SMB1, which you shouldn't be using that one. Uh, that is not secure. Uh, SMB2, SMB2.1, SMB3, SMB3.2, and SMB3.1.1. Other part of it is KSMBD.mounted. That runs in user space. That transfers the user count and password uh, to the kernel module to allow for uh, you know, the connection request to be assigned to a user. Also, the sharing uh, of information from an smb.conf file is with KSMBD, and that connects KSMBD to a Netlink socket. Uh, the, as far as the smb.conf file, it's the same as Samba, so you don't have to make any changes to it. So the KSMBD mounted also handles the RPC requests. It sends DCE RPC responses to the KSMBD in the kernel space. There's also another application called KSMBD.addUser that allows you to add and modify or delete users. That uh, does have a special file, so if there is a, there is a way you can use that utility to import a standard SMB PWV.DB to the uh, to the uh, KSMBD module, or I mean, if you're doing it at home, it's probably you probably don't have that many users anyway. But if you're doing this in a production server where you have thousands of users, you'll probably want to use the import version of it. Uh, I I th I don't know if LDAP is supported yet or not. The last note on their site said that they were working on it. So KSMBD publishes several benchmarks at their GitHub page. So let's take a look at those. They're, as you can see, uh, they're indicating, you know, they're looking at 4K read-write performance, which I believe is also the default for Windows. It's all, it is the default for uh, Linux as well. But you'll see that uh, the version of Samba they're using is quite old. I think that goes back to... Uh, 2020 or something like that. Uh, yeah, that, so I thought, well, okay, maybe maybe I should update. There's been a number of enhancements and and also critical fixes for security issues with SMB. So I thought, well, I'll just go get the latest one. 
uh, and and compare it. They don't publish the settings that were used uh, in that. They don't tell me what their servers were. They use uh, IOZone to produce the results, and IOZone is a good tool. But I'm going to be using uh, FIO today. Yeah, that version of Samba, I was right. December the 15th, 2020, <laughs> goes all the way back to that point. Before we get started, let me talk about some of the, be the benchmark that I'm going to run. I am using Pharonix Test Suite. I am using the PTS FIO version. I had to go in and modify one of the test descriptions in order to get uh, to get it to uh, add an option to select the mounted directory, and in that I defined the mounted directory that I was using to mount the Samba partition. Uh, I also wanted to get away from, uh, because my network is really chatty because of the Gluster cluster that's behind me, so I wanted to get that out of the way, so I left, I just have two VMs that are running on the same machine. Uh, that would be equivalent to a 50 gig, uh, gigabit network, so yeah, just keep that in mind when you're looking at these figures, but it definitely takes the network out, and we're really trying to compare uh, what is the performance of, of NFS, I did include NFS in this because I use NFS here uh, quite a bit, and was curious to see if it would be any faster. I'm also using Samba. I'm using the latest version. Uh, I'll get the. I'll put the version numbers down below. I don't recall offhand what it, which one it is, but it is the latest one that's out. And then I'm using the current version of KSMBD that's supplied with Ubuntu's 2210. Uh, so yeah, that's the one I'm using. General comments are. Uh, with kernel drivers like NFS and KSMBD, you will see higher CPU utilization with those. Uh, and it's simply because it has the extra step of having to communicate with user space. So there's a lot more context switching going on. And so, yeah, the CPU load goes up. It is high. Uh, when it is doing writes, I noticed that, well, first of all, let's talk about the reads. Whether it's random reads or sequential reads makes no difference. The load is about the same. It goes up to almost 70% CPU loading with KSMBD and NFS. Both of them, by the way, use kernel drivers. So, yeah, it, it gets pretty high. The write actually goes up higher. It goes up to 75%. Now, I'm running on two core when I was looking at this, and... NFS generally recommends four, but I was curious to see if it would, you know, overburden it. I didn't get any warnings from either one about, you know, hey, you're, you're, you know, usually glances will tell you, hey, you're, you're using up a lot more CPU and you're, you're experiencing some throttling because of it. I didn't get those warnings. It stayed in the blue, but it was definitely telling me, hey, you probably want to look at adding cores uh, to resolve this issue. And now with Samba, because Samba is a user space utility, it only it didn't consume much of the CPU at all. In fact, it, it for reads was about 23%, and uh, writes were about 34 to 40%, depending upon whether it was sequential or random. Random was heavier, of course. So I just wanted to tell you that before we look at the benchmark. So... Uh, that's all I had for today. Let's go look at the benchmarks. Uh, I'll put my uh, my mount that I used uh, down below so you'll have that if you want to reproduce these results on your own and see what you get. Uh, if you're interested, I, I can turn around and do an IO zone. I just, I just wanted something fast uh, in order to compare all three of them to see. Uh, yeah, IO zone will probably, will probably uh, push it a lot harder, but it's you know, you're going to be limited by the network speed. So anyway, I hope to I hope you enjoyed this video today and uh, please like and subscribe. See you all again next time.